Carmen? Yes, it's just the two of us. So we are, we'll have to do a song and dance routine, Ginny, um, to entertain the Facebook public until uh, Mandy makes it back into the um, into the live again. So absolutely. <laughs> so anyway, it's lovely to be here with you. It's it's lovely that uh, Mandy had the forethought to invite you here today, and I've been so looking forward to seeing you again because it's been such a long time. Likewise, I, I um, feel very blessed to be asked to come on and uh, lovely to see you, you both, you know, I uh, yes. haven't seen you for quite a long time um, and seen a little bit of, of you on Facebook, but not actually to be able to talk to. So it's, it's wonderful to connect. Yes, and, and I always love to have conversation, to share conversation with uh, like-minded, like-hearted others such as yourself, whose knowing of life is like multi-layered, multifaceted. So it's just, it's fabulous where the flow of that conversation can take us, you know, and that really feeds me. I love that. It is, it is. And we, we are in amazing times right now where there's so many, like you said, multi faceted layers and mm. densities and timelines and there's just so much going on <laughs> absolutely the um my guidance showed me that uh we've only ever lived on the very pinnacle point of the iceberg and then what's laying underneath that's always been unseen that that only some of us have been able to dive into and even then it hasn't been the entire depth and width of it or breadth of it is now all starting to uh, come together as one reality within within yes. all the different fields of uh, of like imagination and and yeah. uh, you know all the dimensions and timelines through so we we are in exciting times aren't we Ginny? We are. We absolutely are. Yes, that's how I see it too. It's, I know we talk, you know, we used to talk about the veil thinning and all that, but I actually see everything concertinaing down into one time and space yeah. where everything is revealed. And even the magical things that perhaps we don't, or many don't see, like beings, you know, and nature spirits and um, all those things, we're all going to be eventually living in that same timeline and interacting with each other. I mean, which we do anyway, but we will be able to actually see, feel, hear, uh, and everything else with all our senses. Um, oh, and yeah. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's amazing, isn't it, that, that many, many more people are waking up and feeling this too and some some I found with um, people that have come to me some people are waking up instantly which is quite a shock for them mm. um, and uh, other people yeah and other people it's it's a, a slower process and of course other people it's a lot slower um, and it's been pretty amazing but the ones that have been waking up instantly it's it literally has been mind-blowing for them because they some of them have thought that they've either got a brain tumor or you know there's something <laughs> physically going wrong you know and um even had gone and had tests and and all sorts of course the doctors can't find anything wrong no and i'm just blessed that they've managed to come and find me so i can actually explain to them what's going on and and now what they're seeing because they're seeing things you know yes and amazing well, well you know when you think about it if you are if your entire perception has been limited to just this physical reality and everything yeah. else has been only a concept then to, to wake up that suddenly and start seeing all this stuff, start feeling and realizing all the stuff that wasn't there a moment before, it could literally blow your mind, couldn't it? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I have. I've had younger people contact me and say they actually think they were going crazy. Gosh. Um, and as soon as they started explaining to me what they were seeing, I'm going, no, you're not at all. Your third eye has just gone. <laughs> and, uh, you know, now you're seeing everything, you know, all at yeah. once. And 
and uh, it's you know you will you will learn to not, not control it but to balance it yes and and understand it yes you know absolutely um and here yeah. she is are you back again mandy or are you frozen again oh she was back for a split second and now she's frozen again oh shame. yeah she's having real difficulties at the moment and yeah. it, and it, and it's simply just as i guess what it is as as always so uh, just getting back to our conversation and, um, you know, with these ones that are waking up all of a sudden, I mean, that's where we come in, the likes of you, myself and Mandy yeah. and the others with, with that deeper uh, awareness of life because uh, we are there to, uh, to hold them, to support them and to, to show them that they're not actually going crazy, they're actually moving into reality. So big difference, yes. totally different direction. Totally, yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. yeah. You're on it's mute. Wonderful. Yeah, yes, you're on mute, Mandy. Honestly, this keeps dropping out. I'm, I'm glad it's holding for you girls. Yeah. <laughs> now yeah. like a yo-yo. I'm not sure yeah. what's going on. Anyway, <laughs> I've been enjoying well, back now listening to a bit of your conversation yeah i am i think who knows we'll see um but welcome <laughs> yeah, absolutely <laughs> welcome Ginny, to this beautiful live intimate conversation and um thank you Ginny, for, for carrying on with that there so um today's topic and what we're going to be talking with Gin, um Ginny uh, around is the light codes um, that we're all getting and have been getting and downloading for many, many years, but more intensely now, I think. So, um, Janine, I'll get you, is going to read Ginny's bio, so we'll go with that. Okay, thank you. Ginny has been, Ginny was born psychic for as long as she can remember. And she has been able to sense energy, often see spirit, and tap into other dimensions her whole life. Now living in New Zealand with her husband and a menage of animals in the Bay of Plenty, Ginny is originally from a little village near Stonehenge in the UK. Her work is in the intuitive educational fields, both nationally and internationally. Ginny sees each person's vibration and taps into this as she sees everyone is uniquely made up of glyphs and codes. The healing modalities Ginny works with are healing activations, transmissions, intuitive readings, Reiki, crystals, inner child, emotional freedom, conscious and subconscious work, sound, cell singing, light frequency, light language, fifth dimensional frequency healing and galactic core cellular light frequency healing. Wow, thank you. What a beautiful bio. What a beautiful person. What a beautiful being. Thank you. Mm, thank, you. thank you. Beautiful, all right. And Ginny's work is amazing. Um, <clears throat> so I just wanting to read now, this is in Ginny's own words about the light codes that come through and how she receives, or we'll go into the conversation on how she receives. Um, but it all started with me receiving downloads of different codes, symbols and hieroglyphs. They would always come at night. This happened over many years until one evening I had up to, I had up close ET contact. From that moment on, I knew I was being watched. A few weeks after contact, I had an ET being come in and teach me about the energetics and codes of the human form and how I could adjust the energy blueprint for healing and activating the person. Over the years, this has developed to me using light codes, language and toning light in healing sessions to now be me channeling personal codes for people, which seems to have a profound effect on people when they meditate with their personal code. They're multidimensionally activated and often their life seems to take off in many positive ways. It's like these codes activate their own innate being, adjust the light body, and connect at a soul level, which changes the whole blueprint. Absolutely amazing, Ginny. I myself have um, commissioned you to do my own personal code, 
and I did receive that. I'm going goosebumps now talking about it. Um, and I, I loved it when I first saw it. It was like, oh, okay. What well, I don't know what I had in my head, whether I was expect what I was expecting, but it was, it was, a, it was different. And I sort of park. I park things up, you know. Parked it mm. up here for a minute. <laughs> And then it was about two days or so later, I thought, oh, I need to sit with this. It kept pulling me back to it. Um, yeah. So I sat in with this coding and it absolutely activated. I, it, it was like coming through to me and into me, downloading into me. I could see the pattern of it um, placing itself throughout my body. It was amazing. Wow. Um, so, yeah. Do some amazing work, Jenny. Thank you, thank you. And it it literally all, you know, I never, if, if someone was to say to me, you know, years ago, oh, you're gonna be activating people's codes for them and, and bringing them on board, like lighting them up like a motherboard type thing. I would have said, nah, that's not me. But <laughs> it the journey has, has literally developed like this naturally. And um, I, I am still blown away by it myself because I don't fully understand it totally either. I know that the codes that have been downloaded into me, and I get very emotional about this too because I'm actually sitting here vibrating like crazy all the way through because I'm speaking about this. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. So what what I've found is, and like I said, I don't consciously fully understand it, but what I found is that the codes that have been downloaded into me, and I'm pretty sure they're from ET, but they're from Source really and i believe that's the et uh, and our beautiful beings uh, uh, that that are from many many different realms and dimensions all work together in that higher being place to bring and uh, whatever we need down here or to help us in whatever way and to help the collective and everything um so I've had ET experience, I've had spiritual experience, and since having the codes come in, what I feel is that they have adjusted my blueprint. So they've come in directly from ET or source or, or whoever you'd like to call it, um, from the collective, uh, and they have adjusted my blueprint and I even get them now still, so I'm obviously still being adjusted, but to the point where what I do, it's so hard to explain into, <laughs> into um, you know, human words, because it's it's so multidimensional, it's, mm. it's, it's right out there. Oh. Um, so what I do is, I know I activate people, and I can activate people by consciously drawing or downloading, channeling a code. When I speak like language, when I draw it, when I tone it, and I'm only going by the feedback I've had from other people, that other people have profound activations or things happen to them when they've experienced it, when it's gone in. And of course, for each individual, the timing is up to their, where they're at, where their body's at, where their consciousness is at, um, where their soul's at. So I have no control over that activation, if you like. Mm. I, I just know it comes from me. Um, and I know that the effects, I've never, ever had anyone come back and say, oh, that was awful. I just have had the feedback is that some people's lives have taken off when they've meditated with it. They've had all sorts of things coming into their consciousness, which has really expanded things for them, uh, whether it's on a business level, a personal level, or at whatever level that they decide to channel it into. And it blows me away. It absolutely does. And like I said, I don't fully 
understand it myself consciously. I feel it uh, and I know it's from my soul and, and that it's, it's like the collective are using me as a beacon to yeah. bring these codes in and forward and through. And as I'm speaking this, I'm literally tingling all over. Um, I'm surprised you can't see it actually, because I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, and it's it's been amazing. I, I, when they first started, I would be asleep at night and I start dreaming that I'm seeing all these codes and hieroglyphs and all that. And they it would normally be right at the beginning, it would be a black background and I'd be seeing them all in sparkly golden light being drawn. And then I would wake up and I would be actually consciously awake and I'd still have my eyes shut and I'm still seeing it mm. all being written behind my eyelids. Yeah. Mm. Um, so that, you know, that was my, my cue they had to wake me up because otherwise I would have thought it would have was a dream and so waking up and still seeing it I knew it was a download and I would get also the full body tingles at the same time mm. going right the way through so it was obviously activating the whole of my being now they come they've changed over the years because I, I used to see them on things as well and I'd get them coming in spirals and they'd be going along in lines and stuff like that I haven't actually had them come in that way for quite a while. Now, and I get this regularly, I'd, I'd say at least once a week, it's like flashes of bright white light straight into my consciousness. Again, it comes at night, it wakes me up, and then it, I, I still see it happening. So it's normally about between three and five flashes of this really bright white light which is straight into my consciousness um uh which i know that I, you know i just accept it now okay I'm, I'm i don't understand it but i'm being given more information of some type and being adjusted mm -hmm. yeah you know yes. it's it's the uh, human level of us our minds that needs the explanation of what those codes are doing. And, yeah. <clears throat> and you, you mentioned a few times there, Ginny, that you don't, you can't consciously say it's hard for you to find the words because yeah. it's not about words, as you know, no. as, as we all yeah. know. And it's about pure feeling. And so yeah. uh, once we get to the stage where we bypass the mind completely because we understand that feeling a mind have no correlation at all apart from um, what the mind can feed into the emotions. But uh, yeah. when we bypass the mind, then, then we have this clear pathway of these codes just bursting within our field and, and doing what they're doing without the need to have to understand the why, but to yeah. see the difference in ourself as we move forward. And wow. that's your gift. And, and and to not have to explain is asking your clients to trust in you. And that's a big thing because they, yes. they need to have that description of what's going on. So uh, it's just, yeah, as we move forward and we and we grow more into ourselves as the feeling beings, we'll have that trust in ourselves to yeah. know who to go to or to open ourselves to these codes. But, um, you know, in the meantime, those such as yourself and and Mandy and myself with because we're all light language um, coders. So um, yeah, in the meantime, of course, we're here to help this to do this with humanity. You know, so yeah, I totally hear what you're saying. Yeah, and I I know that white light you talk of, um, Ginny. It's it's so vibrant, like it's it's like a platinum white. Eh? It just brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah. I get that come in for me as well at times when I'm sitting and it's just yeah intense beautiful though very beautiful it mm. is it is and it is so intense and bright it wakes me up yeah um and and I I actually love it now because I just know you know when that happens I go oh thank you thank you thank you because I know that I'm being adjusted more and yes and um that you know the light's coming in and you know, even when I look 
So this is all about codes as well. This is about codes on a collective level. Mm. When I look at into the, uh, another dimension of what's going on on the earth in a crystalline level, yeah. I see the codes in the earth, like a grid, mm -hmm. crystalline grid, um, and around the earth, but I see through each human that's being woken up or awakening to their own true essence, it's a, a grid of light in all living things that is growing by the day. Um, and it literally is, if I can explain it, it's like a, a snow crystal in a, a, like a mandala type mm. format, growing and spreading all around the earth as each, each living thing actually awakens. And it's a beautiful thing to see. Mm. Uh, and I wish everyone could see it because I, I, you know, I see it in my mind's eye and it's, oh. it's, it's beautiful. Um, again, it's very coded. In fact, I've actually drawn a code, which I thought I would, don't know whether you can see that or not. Oh. Uh, just bring it closer to the um, to yes, and just a bit closer even than that, because <laughs> you keep disappearing into the universe. Oh. <laughs> you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is uh, fun today, isn't it's it? Not showing up, is it? But that's fine. What I'll do is I'll put it on the comments in the okay. Facebook page. That's a yeah. great idea. That's a great yeah. idea. You know, if 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 everybody could see, and of course the day will come when everybody can see, what we see and what we know right now with that growing light, that uh, beautiful grid light crystalline mandala that's, that's happening around the earth, there would be yeah. no doubt whatsoever within the mind of anyone that the light yeah. has won this uh one of the rights to this reality yeah. you know yeah. and, and but yeah. you know of course people don't and so the course as we were saying earlier on we can see the dark and the light are both building up to a point right now and 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 it brings a lot of doubt to people right in this moment as to what's going on out there but uh, yes you yeah. take it from the broader perspective and you can see yes. that growing light and and oh my gosh yes the beauty yeah. is is divine that's yeah that would it be is. That would be how I'd describe it, that. Yeah. Wow. It Beautiful. is. It, literally, if you get rid of the illusion of this reality, yeah. it, that's what you see. Exactly. Um, mm. Yeah. 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 And it really just comes back to experiencing. <laughs> you know, we take all the yeah. judgment away. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So, um, Ginny, what um, do you know the galactic? A race of the ET, as you term them, ETs, um, that taught you? Yes, well, I think so. I believe that she was Arcturian, which of course are a, a very healing race. Mm -hmm. um, I have drawn a picture of her. I haven't actually got that with me right now, but um, I have drawn a picture of her. Um, she had a uniform on. I could see her with a uniform and the uniform I've never seen anything like the material it was almost like it was alive it was moving shimmering silvery metallic -y sort of thing it, she kind of looked like she had shoulder pads on because her shoulders were very square and it was a a pale sort of silvery bluey gray color Mm. Um, down to the ground as well, the, uh, the actual um, garment she was wearing. And she had um, sort of a pale gray blue skin, um, larger eyes, the typical what people would think would be a gray, but the presence of her was not emotional so there was no emotion but it was very i can't even say loving because there was no emotion but it was mm. a very beautiful feeling coming mm. from her if you like um and she was 
implanting images in my mind of, of uh, the energetics on the body. And, and it was literally like grids of energy all over the body oh, oh. and that I could adjust them. And she, she it, I could not, uh, not only with my fingers, but actually with my voice. This is the fascinating thing, oh. but with my voice. So the toning and singing was very important. It opened things up and moved things on a level beyond my understanding. It was like the, the essence of where that sound and that frequency came from, which was my soul or the collective that's within me, was adjusting the energy blueprint of the body. Oh. Um, and I could see it all in like little golden sparkly bits of light that were moving around the body. It was pretty fascinating. And funny enough, while because this went on for several weeks, every time I had a client, because I, I, I had my healing practice in Auckland then, and every time I had a client come in, the hologram of her would come in and, and be in the corner of the room. Now, mm. I'll just explain to anyone watching, I wasn't seeing her with these eyes. I was seeing her with my extra sight, but I knew she was there. I could feel her. And of course she was planting images in my mind. But funnily enough, twice while she was teaching me, See, another human extra. male was brought I in. Knew she was there, I could feel her. And of course she was planting images. Ooh, sorry. I can hear noise. I'm trying <laughs> to see okay. the comments. <laughs> <laughs> you may have to move uh, yeah, there. Another I will. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. A human nail was brought in and was stood by the, the healing table um, and was watching what was going on. Now, that only happened twice, and it was the same male each time, funnily enough. Mm. And I knew, don't ask me how I knew, but I just knew that he was asleep somewhere on this planet and his astral form had been brought in to learn whatever she was teaching on those particular days. Uh, it was amazing, honestly. It, was, it, it, it blew my mind what was going on, you know. <laughs> I just felt so blessed, so, so, so very blessed. And I would love that experience again. <laughs> Oh, so you put it out. You put it out there now. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you, oh, sorry, sorry, Mandy, go. Oh, you no. go. When, when you were talking before, Ginny, about um, the material of her uniform and how it seemed to be alive, um, it reminded me of a time um, many years ago when I went into a different timeline and and uh, went into the body of myself in that timeline and I saw exactly the same thing and I was more fascinated with that than anything so yeah. I was I had very pale gold skin and my what looked like a gown or robes was was golden as well um, and what I thought uh, was a gown or robes actually moved into my legs and came out again and when I held my arm up to to have a look the the it was so beautiful it was like liquid silk but it was yeah. moving into oh. my arm as I moved my hand in there and then it would come extend out and it was like what I was uh, creating was with with my consciousness right in that moment. If I wanted a sleeve, out it came. If I if I didn't, in Beautiful. it went. You know, and it was that was fascinating. Yeah. Even the the most delicate sandaly looking things on my feet came in and out of my feet as I wriggled my toes and moved. So um, yeah, that entire. Uh, civilization on that on that timeline is beautiful but I was more and there was a yeah. lot more experience but I was more fascinated with this uh garment actually being part of my being you know so uh, yeah. yeah thanks for and that thought that. reality though isn't it yeah the yeah. instant instant thought reality and, and or what feeling it, or feeling yeah. reality yeah yes yeah. yes yeah yeah, yeah. Well, thinking sleep, yeah. and then you have it, you know, yeah. <laughs> <That's sort Yeah. laughs> <of> activating it. But yeah, and that, um, uh, for me, Arcturian thing too, you know, that's my my clan as such. 
and there is some amazing technology that that we have in there yeah. and for yeah. me when clients would come in it was like um it was lifting the blueprint like you're saying exactly that on the t healing table and it's like the blueprint would be lifted and you could you could um and it was it was as if this panel had come down for me and it was like punching in these codes so yeah. actually literally punching in a code that was shifting the template and the design of these templates with the clients it was it was amazing um but yeah. we have a question here from donna and yeah. donna there's there's a lovely comments on here ladies thank you so much for joining us mm. um today um but anyway donna's asked if someone is told they are et how would one explore this i would meditate yeah. I would literally meditate with it, just to have no expectations and just ask your higher self, ask your soul, if you like, to show you um, what your ET lineage is. Meditate with it and just see what comes. Um, that's what I would do in, in that circumstance. I would just play with it. Don't, don't go into it with that, you know, I must see that. Just go into it lightly and that play because it's in those moments of play and lightness that you'll be shown, uh, you know, lots of different things. Mm. And hopefully you'll get the same experience where actually things will be put into your consciousness so you can explore that and go with it. Don't just, you know, when, it, when something comes in, don't just go, oh, yeah, that was brilliant. And then it, then it kind of fades. Just float with it so it's not a falseness it's a just float into it and and explore see uh you know in your mind's eye maybe what planet you you were from what what plants were on that planet what other oh. beings were on that planet what were the structures of the buildings like um or even on board a ship allow yourself to be floating into that experience and then and trust what you're getting. Trust oh. it. Mm, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Once you've opened those doorways, that's when you can expand your consciousness into that. Mm. Mm. And I would I would add to that, um, Ginny, that fabulous explanation that, you know, if a person just puts out their intention to the universe, they speak it out loud. So they hear themselves say that they would like to know more about this of themselves, then just let it go then and be open to yeah. life bringing into, into them over the next few days or weeks. Don't look for it. Don't expect it. Just be open to it. Uh, and, and seeing what comes up either yeah. on the internet and in sentences in a book, any, you know, in movies or anything like that, and then exploring that. So taking, taking that uh, piece that's come in and just sitting with it and exploring it. And, and I just add here too that we, we've got to always remember that we have been all the extraterrestrials and all the civilizations. Oh. We have had these experiences right through time. And so uh, whatever comes up is the, is the relevant one in the moment. But there's so yeah. many that we can call on within ourselves. You know, we have it all. Absolutely. So, yep. yeah, and no expectation no limitation on it and the big part yeah. is trust in yourself oh. and what comes to you and the feeling that comes when something is presented to you trust in that don't it's fob so, it off yeah. don't fob it off don't say oh you know it can't be don't do that to yourself oh. anymore yeah one of the ways that I um I I wanted to know where I came from what was my you know original um existence i suppose in the sense before spark you know of consciousness of course um and yeah went to the arcturian um planet or arcturius but the way that i did it was that because somebody could tell me something but i always needed to find out for myself it was like yep okay well i can sort of feel that that could be have a bit of truth to it but i'd always want to know myself so this one time yeah. i sat and I wanted to travel out and, and find where I came from. Um, and I lifted out of body 
and got a bit frightened so shot back into body again and sat there and oh you know <laughs> then tried again went a bit further and and came back in again a bit fearful the third time there was no return it was like poof i was just gone mm. um and what had happened before that was i read on google you know googled galactic races et races whatever i might have put in there and looked at the big long list because there's many many different races and they're only um you know have been recorded through uh i mean there's probably thousands hundreds of thousands more that are not recorded mm. but um anyway those that were i felt into each time i was reading through their their um qualities abilities all the things that they were described as and the arcturian really resonated like my whole body just went into this vibration and my heart just poof, straight open i thought this is the one mm. um and so it was from that 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 really made me want to find out but going and finding that information once i did i realized that the gifts that were coming through me on like as a, a healer um so i could identify now what my Maori blood was bringing in, the tūpuna and the different way that we work with that, and then my galactic mm -hmm. race and who that was and how that all worked and how that all fitted together and blended. It was just beautiful. But no more questioning was lovely. Mm. It was a deep knowing, yeah. an innate knowing, and that just built confidence. It wasn't, yeah, there was, there was no more questioning. So, yeah, anyone yeah. who's wanting to just, yeah, find out, go for it. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely. I, I, will, I will say too that there are many, many ET races actually visiting the earth on a constant level. I've had um, physical ET experience on many occasions here where I live here, but also when we lived in Beachlands. I also um, belong to the CE5 group, which uh, is here in New Zealand and I go on their expeditions and we have amazing contact I mm. mean literally up close mm. uh, being touched being scanned uh, light anom anomalies uh, uh, one time I actually heard someone it sounded very much like light language actually being spoken right behind me and uh, this was in a meditation when we were sat out in the field um, all in a group and um, afterwards we share what experiences we might have had in the meditation. And so I shared that I heard this light language and there was an American guy next to me and he heard it too. Uh, so we, know, we knew that there was an ET behind us that were, was actually speaking to us both. Not that we understood what was being said, but it did sound just like light language. Um, and so, you know, if you really want physical ET contact, set that intention too. But I will tell you that they do not want to frighten mm. you. So if you have any ounce of fear within you, which is normal because yeah. it's a realm that we unfortunately have, have often been taught a, a fear about because of all the films that have been shown about ET contact and all that stuff. Um, but the, the, the experiences I've had on a physical level have all been positive. I have never had any negative experiences at all. Um, mm. I've even been healed, actually. I, uh, this only happened the beginning of last year and I wasn't consciously aware of the healing, but when I busted my ankle, the two our two bulldogs happened to knock me flying outside one day. So I went over on my ankle, fractured it twice, two fractures, oh. which showed up on the x-ray. Two weeks later, I had to go back and have another x-ray through the cast that had already been put on. No fractures shown. Mm. So I, I know that I was healed within those two weeks. Um, and thank you, thank you for that. Um, so, you know, we've had, We've had um, electrical things happening here in the house and, and I've, I feel the atmosphere in the, in the room change. So I know that beings have come in. They have always come in cloaked, come in here. Um, so we, yeah, we've had lots of interaction with different electrical things happening here. So if you want to have 
actual ET contact, put that out there too. But just remember, they will not want to frighten you. Mm. So um, if, if you have any fear around it, even though they might show up, you might not see them or mm. feel them because they are so highly advanced with their technology that um, they can come in cloaked and be stood right next to you and that they will only, you will only feel it if they want you to feel it or mm. hear it or see it, you know? So um, uh, also, you know, we've had major experience in the bush with other type of ter uh, extraterrestrial beings, um, which I believe are here actually to, in support of all the nature we have on this planet. Mm. Um, and they're working with the nature and everything else. So anyone else that happens to be also very nature orientated, they can feel it within you. And, um, you know, in the right circumstances, when you're at your most vulnerable, really, they, they need to know that you're, you haven't come with any harm or anything like that or any ulterior motive. This is with these little nature ETs. You know, often they will come up close if you literally get down on your knees because they're only short little beings and put your arms out and really open your heart and expand your heart and just radiate out that love from every orifice that you've got from through your skin and everything. And that way they will sense your true agenda, if you like, that it is pure love and, and uh, that you're more likely to get contact then, you know, with the, with the beautiful nature beings. Um, yeah. I've, I've, I feel so blessed that some of the experiences I've had, and I know there's many more to come. So, and we've even heard craft over the house here when the lights have been going crazy in the house. And I hear this sound that was like a <laughs> at night. So you know yes. there's nothing else out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. right down low and the lights are going in the house. Yeah. And you know that it's a craft right above the house. Mm. Um, yeah. I actually went uh, yeah. to our country road about 3 a.m. in the morning. I heard that that noise. It was just whoo, whoo, whoo. and like it was here, but not here too. It was like everywhere. <laughs> it was weird. Yes. And not weird, yes. we know. But um, I, I, I went out onto this the road out, outside to have a look and see what was going on, but nothing showed up. Yeah. But I've just had um, Tara has put in here too. They came for a visit, but I couldn't see or feel them. But my three-year-old daughter could she, could. she referred to them as the colours. I believe the Arcturians Beautiful. were trying to get my attention through her. Beautiful Tara. That's That's beautiful. Lovely. Yes, that beautiful experience. Because oh. the young ones, the young ones are so open. Yeah. They they have no yeah. filters whatsoever to stop and no fear and full trust yeah. so yes absolutely the colors though yeah. i love that mm. the arcturian um beautiful arcturian that that showed up for me first off he he's he's he sparkles he's just all sparkle of all colors like you know the diamond and oh it's just gorgeous this beautiful yeah. energy mm. yeah and it, yes. isn't it wonderful that the young ones are are having those experiences. I've had a few people contact me about, um, well, one, one lady in particular, her daughter was drawing on the walls. She was only young, I think she was only about four, but she was drawing a little green man and a, and a little silver disc on the walls and was, and was saying to mum that, you know, <laughs> that she's interacting with him, you know? Oh, okay. And so mum contacted me and go, what's going on here? And I said, don't worry about it. She's having an experience with ET and um, I've had a, a, someone else contact me they're hearing little footsteps running around at night so I went in there and I did a clearing of all spirit that were in there that shouldn't have been in there um, and the footsteps were still happening so when I tuned into that though I think they had three children and they, they were all interacting and it was little ET beings that were coming in and teaching the kids at night mm. <laughs> all the different Beautiful. things. So it was mm. the little ETs that they, the two parents that were downstairs were hearing running around upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they're here. 
they're interacting oh, yes. with the young ones. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I, you know, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, I was going to say that before. And, um, uh, but what I wanted to just share right now is that my oldest grandson, he's 20 now, and when he was three, he was sitting at a table, at a coffee table with a pad and pen, and he was writing line after line after line after line of blips and codes wow. and light language. Wow. And I just stood over his shoulder watching, and I thought, oh, my gosh, I called out to his mum. I said, come and have a look at this. And she whispered to me, what's he doing? I said, he's actually penning light language. And um, cool. yeah, and the moment she said to him, what are you doing, bubs? He stopped. And yeah. that was it. The yeah. contact was broken, you know, the connection. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that's, I love those tangible um, pieces Beautiful. that, that yeah. come into our life. You know, what I was going to say before was just what you touched on, Mandy, about we are them, you know, and mm -hmm. um, often as human beings in our curiosity, our minds want to see the external. We want to have the external experience and, and see uh, these beautiful beings from other civilizations, forgetting that the closest and most beautiful being to us is actually inside us. And mm -hmm. we are from those civilizations, you know, and uh, so never to forget that uh, to go inward, we can have the closest, most upfront, face-to-face, -face, extraterrestrial experience of our lives. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, yeah. again, that's trusting in what we get with ourselves too and believing, believing in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so you're still having contact, obviously, Ginny, all going yeah. on all the yeah. time. Yeah, I love it. I've I've um I've now changed to um I've got a radio. It's a, a what they call walkie-talkie, and I have two going because the, the ET interact actually through these radios. Yeah. So I have two going, and they're both on the same frequency. Uh, they're not here with me at the moment they're in the kitchen but they're actually they're very much like this so two on the same frequency um and only one of them will be going and you know if something's on the same frequency and one goes the other one also goes mm. yep. so you know that that actually is an interaction and what i found is that two different types of beings seem to interact through it and it's a pattern of coded um, blips. I can only call it that. Um, and it seems to be, and, and I feel like these are energy beings. So they're like healers or energy beings uh -huh. that come through and interact in that way. And it's a pattern that it's a regular pattern. And as soon as I go outside with my radios, it starts. So I know that they're here. I know they're in the vicinity of, of it. And uh, one of some of the other radios that I've got, because I've got several, um, I get another interaction through one of them. And that is a much more direct. I know it's from a different race because because of the just the way it comes through. It's like oh. and it's really intense. And the other one's just a, a, a sort of a, a set pattern that just repeats over and over. Um, yeah, it's amazing. So, I, and literally I'll go out the door and it starts and I might go and sit in the spa at night and watch the stars and I've got the radio there and that's going off and it's <laughs> constantly. And, you know, I'll see um, shooting stars. I'll see, often I will see um so i think they're kind of portals that are open i was going to say actually mandy when you said you heard that noise yep that you couldn't see anything i know i know which you probably know this anyway but for anyone else listening the et comes through portals so mm. they can be in the portal and not quite materialized yes so you can the sound will come through but actually you might not see anything mm. oh. Um, and, and sometimes you can see those portals. Like I see them often. I'll see them actually as like, they look like a black hole that's, that's literally appeared and then it disappears within a second. Um, and me and my daughter have seen energy craft 
that has been moving so quickly and it's literally almost within you know a couple of blinks and it's gone right up into the atmosphere very very quickly and this one in particular had a purple center and an energy shield around it we both saw it and it was going at such speed um and that was above the house here and we've heard we've actually heard um sounds very very close to you like clicking noises and all sorts of other things uh one time here we had a ground flash which is literally this flash of light comes out of nowhere lights up the whole ground uh and then vanishes back up again so you know there's a craft up there and it's yes. literally lit up the ground yeah um so yeah i love it i, I yes. can talk about et contact forever same <laughs> I we 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 know it's living because I live in Whangarei now, but Dargaville is a very active place along yes, the beach out here on the west coast. Yeah. There's a lot of activity, yeah. Um, yeah. but we were doing a sweet lodge actually in the country, so the sky was really you know you could see what was going on, and um, there'd been some strange sort of type of energy. You know, you could feel something else was sitting around us, uh, yeah. and there were um triangle so they had formed a triangle three ships and they were synchronized they were speeding across mm -hmm. the sky but in in synchronous like they just didn't move out of that that triangle space and they were they were quite a way yeah. apart from each other i don't know it could have been one huge ship with three mm -hmm. lights of course it could have been i don't know but mm -hmm. it was amazing the other yeah. thing i wanted to just ask too is do you feel that the um you know you were saying that that uh, they were coming through on your radio as a pattern is that yeah. morse coding like do you feel like it's a morse code type of thing or it is an interaction of codes but it's not morse code because right. i have recorded it and um i've sent it to somebody who knows morse code and uh -huh. it's not morse oh. code yeah yeah um, my dad actually used to do Morse code. So when I actually hear Morse code, because my dad's passed away now, I often wonder, is that dad? Is that you, dad, trying to contact <laughs> oh, me? Yeah. Doing a da 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 dip 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 dip, dip <laughs> you know. <laughs> Coming from his ship. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> awesome. I oh, remember. I remember sitting in a group one time years ago and we were talking about extraterrestrials and the entire group was open to contact. And then somebody got the message for us to go outside now, like it was very, very strong, clear message. So we were very excited and we all got up and we raced outside expecting to see a craft or uh, something. But what actually happened was it was like the sky was falling in of all the stars. So literally thousands and thousands of tiny stars in a sort of a goldy silver color were being poured down from the sky oh. and just disappearing in the atmosphere like just above our heads so if we put our hands up we still couldn't touch them all that although they literally looked like they were going to actually come right down to the earth so they were all just disappearing just out of reach but it was like the entire universe was pouring in on us out there totally not what we expected but wow oh. what an amazing yeah. experience to have we all went back inside again when yeah. it when it stopped you know completely yeah. gobsmacked that that happened yeah. over my house here ah. too yeah uh, this huge gold ball of light like I was driving up towards the house so it was big and it was over my place and then it just burst like a big fireworks yeah, yeah. and all this gold just beautiful shimmered down but the yeah. other thing too talking about portals um Ginny the my daughter and I actually watched a ship um first we saw we saw that it was like the light of this big beam of light just sort of came through at this in the sky and yeah. it was I but totally believe because it moved then it went to a dimmer light and it just sort of moved like a ship would but I believe yeah. Then what happened could because this is why I believe it was going in and out of the portal because mm -hmm. it then traveled back through another light 
burst type of thing and and it just, just sort of disappeared yeah so sounds it was like, like it came through burst through and then traveled a wee bit then reversed back again and did the same thing went back through that burst yeah and i'm mm. sure it was showing us it was like well here we are this is where we're coming in and out and i've kept yeah. that sort of um sky vision in the sense of where i feel the portal is that they come in and out i've sort of got yeah. that mapped in my mind where it is in the sky now and i'll quite yeah. often go out and stand out there and you know show me again yeah, yeah. i think I, I i it does does sound like that was a portal but i also believe that they can open portals anywhere they like so yes yeah. you know it might not necessarily be in that same bit same of sky place. again um yeah, I mean that their technology is is quantum, you know, mm, multi-dimensional yes. quantum technology. So they can do anything with the thought. I mean, um, just going back to the light language, I just had a thought come in. Um, I don't know whether you've heard of her, Susie Hansen, who um, is mm. like New Zealand's ET lady. Um, got her book. Got her book. Have you? Oh. Yes. Well, in yeah. her book, in her book, she's. There's one part when she was taken up on board craft, she was shown. So this is connected with the light language. She was shown by ET marks on what looked like. She said she explains it, it kind of what looked like an iPad type thing. Um, and these marks were like light language being written. Mm. But the ET that was teaching her showed her that each line was so multidimensional, had held so much information about everything in the cosmos, um, and that was each line. Mm. So you can imagine with light language, light codes, speaking it, singing it, or, or whatever we do, it holds so much information in that one mm frequency or one line that it it literally like creation it's it's that space of nothingness which is also filled with absolutely everything yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely <laughs> yeah um so so that's how mind-blowing if you like each line of the codes can be, whether it's being spoken, sung, written, or even drawn with hands. Yeah. You know, um, whatever way it comes. Yeah. And it, and it's and it's it will connect with the soul and the innate being of that individual that's watching it. And even though uh, you know, the, there could be several different people watching one video, say, of someone speaking light language or drawing it or whatever. The information for each individual mm. will be different depending on where they're at. Yes. And we'll, totally. we'll activate them, yeah, depending yeah. on where they're at, yeah. Sometimes yeah. when I've been either saying or singing light language to a client, I watch it enter their field around them and it's yep. like it enters the field and it expands within the field and then it's like they become transparent and I see the field move right through them taking all this uh, incredible, I call them parcels of knowledge because exactly what you said, Jenny, yep. there is so yep. much held within each piece within each tiny yeah. piece so and i watch them move in and through and it's like they disappear into the universe with inside that person it's just yes. absolutely beautiful experience yeah. that's that's how i see it too but when I, I i see it coming down from the quantum field and going into yeah. that person and doing the same thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah, just yeah. Beautiful. that's the way i see it too jenny um, yeah. my, my little granddaughter, she's 23 months old, and she will babble like a baby does type of toddler does. But there's times where she's flipped in probably about three different times now where she's flipped into this absolute light language. She's, she's mm. just speaking light language. And it's, yeah. um, it's so awesome to sort of watch her and, and awesome. just observe it, though. It's really cool. 
Yeah. These, yeah. these children are incredible that have yeah. been coming in for the last few years and now, right. you know, they're, they're the builders of the new world. Like oh. we're we are yeah. moving everything there, but then they're yeah. the ones that are going to be in it and really doing it and um, we, we can we can learn yeah. so much from them you know uh, yeah totally yeah for sure yeah i see yeah i see us as the ones that have stepped through and walked through the thickness of the density of uh. stuff that's happened <laughs> on this planet and we've done the clearing as much as we can and still doing um are to make pathways so these young ones can come through and step into wow. their time and their knowledge and knowing and like you said create the new world yeah um, it's like we've been the ones that have cleared the pathway uh, as much as we can um for generations back too not just our generation absolutely uh, no that's yeah. right yeah yeah, yeah. it's been absolutely. huge and yeah. Oh, gosh, yes. And that word stuff that you just said in that uh, sentence then, isn't it going to be absolutely incredible when we're in a stuff-free world? Because stuff, yeah. stuff <laughs> is heavy. Stuff yeah. is, is, you know, uh, drops. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is. Bring it, it is on. lightening up, and we are lighting up the world, and these young ones coming in, like you say, are definitely lighting it up as well, and it's um it's a really fun place to be if we if we're in you know in creative flow rather yes, than yes. mental human yes. space <laughs> of what's yeah. going on you know staying in that Absolutely. creative flow because that's who we are that's what we are and we it are is. all these different galactic um, beings from around the, the universe experiencing here in this form so it is an exciting yeah. time and Ginny we've we've come to the end of our hour so thank you so so much for joining us today on our first live intimate conversations and um and brilliant work honestly and thank you thank you for everything that you've done over this time that we've all been here <laughs> and clearing and you know bringing new realities in and helping people activate in their bodies their real their realness and their trueness mm -hmm. within so mm -hmm. thank you thank you and janine thank you wonderful so host <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, <laughs> such a pleasure. And thank you, girls, for carrying on for me. Well, I was trying to work out. I had to put in my Wi-Fi ex been, um, extender thing. So it, it obviously was Wi-Fi. But thank you so, so much. And thank you, everyone, for joining in. We've had some really great comments. And, you know, just beautiful to, um, to see the interest in this conversation, actually. Mm -hmm um igniting awesome. others as well mm. so thank you all very very much what a pleasure thank you thank, thank you. you thank you Jenny. lots Jenny. of love thank you lots of love lots of love to you